Today in operating system session, we'll be moving on to the next CPU scheduling algorithm, which we call it as a round robin scheduling algorithm. As the name implies here, if you have n number of process P1, P2, P3 and P4, each process will be allotted a CPU for some amount of time. First P1 will execute, then the chance will be given to P2, next P3, next P4 and again to P1. So since the CPU is allotted here in a circular fashion, you call it as round robin. And amount of time the CPU is being allocated to a particular process, we call it as time slice. Time slice. This is a time slice. Or you can even call it as a time quantum. So each particular process will be allotted a CPU for this fixed amount of time, which is known as time slice or a time quantum. Now, when you actually see the algorithm here, initially the process will be in ready queue. You select the process and if the burst time, actual time required for execution is less than the time quantum which you are allotted, obviously it goes for execution and it leads to termination. But if your burst time is more than the time quantum that has been specified, then you check after the time, amount of time quantum expires, since it is not able to execute, again it moves to your ready queue and this process continues till it is able to execute and finally when it expires it moves to your termination stage. So we'll just see this example with the round robin scheduling. So here we need to maintain two queues. One we call it as a, a ready queue. Here I'll maintain a list of ready queue here. And as usual this is nothing but your Gantt chart. Gantt chart. So we start with the first process. So at 0 at the time if you see here at 0 at the time which is a process which is present here p1 so p1 will be allotted so p1 is initially in your ready queue and there is no other process so we'll go for making p1 into the ready queue and for how many uh, time slices here i'm assuming my time slice is equal to 2 milliseconds here it will be executing it for 2 milliseconds so again you should cross check the tire thing here so when you see the table here at time quantum 2 or time slice 2, you have already P2 and P3 which are present in the ready queue. So what we have to do, we have to remove this P1 because you have already given a chance. P2 will be present in the ready queue, P3 will be present in the ready queue and P1 will be added up. Why the P1 is added up is for P1, what is the amount of time we have allocated here? 5. Out of 5, what is the amount of time it could utilize? Only 2. So 3 milliseconds are still pending for P1. So I've just added up at the back of the queue again. Now among P2 and P3 and P4, now I allot the CPU for P2. For how many milliseconds? 2 milliseconds. So 2 plus 2 would be 4. And when you are allocating this thing, so this will be removed from the ready queue because the chance is already given. And you reduce this burst time of this particular process where it will be 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 milliseconds. Now, at fourth millisecond, you just see what is the other process that is added up in the queue, which is nothing but P4. So first you add P4 into the ready queue. And since you require some amount of time for your P2 execute, that also you add it into the queue. So what is there at the starting end of your ready queue now P3? So P3, what is the amount of time you allocate? 6 because 2 time quant and P3 is able to execute. So I'll just move it from the ready queue and I'll not add it to the end of the ready queue because it has completed its execution. Now what is the next process here? My P1. Now coming to your P1, again you allot 2 milliseconds of time where it would be 8. And what is the uh, time you require here? You require 3 milliseconds minus 2. So you, it is pending with 1 millisecond again. So just remove the process from the ready queue and add it at the end of the queue because you still require the CPU for its completion. Now, the next process which is present, now you have no other process to be added up because at 4, arrival time 4 only, all the process have entered up. So now next process you have is P4. So I'll just remove it from the ready queue and give it to the CPU. Now here P4 will be added up. And uh, just see the burst time, it is 1. You want time slices too, but you can still allot it only one. You will not give it two milliseconds because the remaining time will be wasted. So it is nine. I'll just remove it from the ready queue and it will not be added back into the ready queue because it has finished its execution. Now I'll left out with P2. Now P2, what is the pending time? I have two milliseconds. So exact as your time mill uh, time quantum. So 11 milliseconds, it has completed its execution and you are not adding it. 
and lastly you are with p1 and p1 how much time it requires 1 millisecond so here i lot 1 millisecond so this is your 12 milliseconds so when you see p1 when it is able what is the completion time of p1 it is 12 p2 completion time would be 11 p3 completion time would be 6 p4 completion time would be 9 so based on these completion types we can calculate the turnaround time we can calculate the waiting time we can even calculate the response time and their averages now when you just see here the first response of p1 is at 0 first response of p2 is at 2 first response of p3 is at 4 even though p1 is repeating for the second time the first response would be 0 and p2 is repeating at 9 but cpu was initially allotted here so these are your first responses which will help you to calculate your response time no. having seen the round robin scheduling here the basic advantage is it is best performance why because you are sharing the uh, time is given to each and every process and it is generally as i told you it is used in client server architecture we don't have any starvation or confi effect and it is a fair allocation because each one is getting their own chance of executing you need not wait for a smaller process will not wait for a longer process or a lower priority process is waiting for a higher priority process all those things will not come into picture disadvantage is uh, the only problem is if you have a starvation i mean it leads to starvation when the burst time is very large so each time two milliseconds so this starvation problem is generally depending upon the time quantum so you cannot when you are deciding the time quantum you have to be very much cautious that the time quantum should not be very small if the time quantum is very small what happens the number of context switches or more if i give only one millisecond every time i need to stop and go on to the next process if the time quantum is very large what will happen it is, will be same as your fcfs where you allot a process and uh, you use it till the end of the completion so fixing this time quantum is very tedious job that is the main difficulty when you go for your round robin and one more thing here i cannot go for setting up any priority because all the process are treated equally in addition to this uh, scheduling algorithms which i have already covered fcfs SJF, prim, uh, primi no, primitive version of this SRTF, and we have seen priority where we have seen two versions, primitive and non primitive, and you even have round robin. So, when you go for round robin, which we have covered earlier, it is a primitive version because you are not allotting the CPU totally to a particular process, you are taking out in between. So, this is a primitive version. Now, when you go for multi level queue scheduling here, assume you have now till now we have seen only one ready queue but you may get a situation where you want different ready queues so this is ready queue 1 ready queue 2 ready queue 3 ready queue 4 and ready queue 5 and you have the process and you are dividing the process based on your functionality so all type of system processor which will which you want your operating system to work interactive process where you have your vlc media or you have a game playing app or uh, uh, game playing apps anything so where you have interactive things to be done interactive editing where you have your compilers batch process where you group the set of instructions into a single file and start executing and you have your normal program which is an example here we are taking it as a student process so depending on the type of operation you are categorizing them into different process and each of the process is being given a separate queue so you have multiple ready queues and these things now when you see this multi-level queue scheduling the priority if you check it this has higher priority when compared to this so when you are ex when you are at this particular stage so when you want to execute interactive editing process here i have p1 assume p2 here I have p3 and here I have p4 and here I have p5 and p6 you will be execute your p5 only when you, after you have completed executing p1 p2 p3 p4 then only you will be coming on to your interactive as you are going down the priority of it will be less so you will be able to move into a lower priority queue only when the higher priority queues are empty so this is the main problem when you go for multi queue scheduling the advantage is that you are able to maintain multiple ready queues and you are able to segregate it the only problem is 
you cannot directly go to a particular queue now if i want to move to batch process all the before queues are to be empty only then i come to batch process assume a case you are executing a process here p7 but in meantime you got some other process p8 into a system process what will happen the cpu will stop executing this p7 process and chance will be given for p8 to its execution so this is also a preemptive algorithm where you are stopping a lower priority process and giving a chance to your higher priority process so normally here also you'll get me you will get a problem of starvation coming to the advantages as i told you it can be used with uh, n number of process you have a starvation and once you assign a process to a particular queue that process should be in that queue only you cannot move the process from one particular queue to other queue so to avoid the problems of multi queue scheduling we move on to the next one which is nothing but multi level feedback queue scheduling so what was the problem we have seen earlier there was no movement one process from one queue if it is present in queue 1 one, one particular queue it will not be moved to any other queue so the movement was not there whereas here when i go for multi level feedback queue scheduling algorithm we go for seeing in such a way that you can even move a process from one queue to the other queue let me tell you an example i assume i have three queues here and you can just see the line here this is a feedback now initially you got a process p1 so it will be first added into this queue i assume the time quantum of this is 16 milliseconds the burst time is 16 milliseconds whereas here for this particular queue i am employing round robin algorithm so it will be given 8 milliseconds but this p1 requires 8 more milliseconds for its execution right so if it is not able to complete within the time quantum after 8 milliseconds this process will be moved into a lower queue and this continues if the time burst time of it is more and before we move on to the next one let me make it very clear whether it whether you go for multi level queue or multi level feedback queue scheduling each of the queue if you go for q1 q2 q3 or any other queues each particular queue can go for using its own scheduling algorithm so it can employ fcfs it can employ sjf each queue can go for employing different scheduling algorithms so here in multi level feedback queue you have an option that once a process enters into the queue you have a flexibility of demoting the process to the lower queues similarly you have an option that whenever you have a process present in the lower queue you can even promote it to your higher queue and this can be done by means of an aging technique which we have dealt it earlier so here the moment of the process is very much clearly visible and there is no a restriction that or the process should be present in only that particular queue the problem of your multi level queue scheduling is been overcome here now when you go for this multi level feedback queue scheduler it has the following operations to do first thing is it has to decide number of queues what is a scheduling algorithm because i told you each queue go and go for each uh, its own scheduling algorithm the process or the method which you determine where you can upgrade upgrade means you want it to be moved to the higher priority queue and you have to decide a method which will demote process to a lower priority queue and you have to even mention uh, the pro method which will decide when the process will enter into the queue and what type of service is to be provided coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this multi level feedback scheduling as you have seen there is a moment of the process it is very flexible because of this and it prevents starvation because you by forbidding whether you get a starvation or not you are able to move the process from one queue to the other queue the thing is the bed scheduler you have to decide upon the various parameters and you have a more cpu overhead because each queue is maintaining different algorithms since each queue is maintaining different algorithms it is more complex